I paid $380 Canadian for these AirPods Pro, including Apple Care and taxes. They're retailing for $329 Canadian dollars and $249 US dollars. I still think after one month of using these that they are super expensive, but I think they're worth the money and let me explain why. Welcome to MD Prospect everyone. My name is Jimmy. I'm a final year medical student here in Canada. So before I go on with the rest of the video, I will give my final verdict so that I don't waste any of you guys' time. If my friends were to approach me and ask me, should I buy these AirPods Pro? Here are four things that I would say. One, buy AirPods Pro if you're going to buy regular AirPods. Two, buy AirPods Pro if you're going to buy over-the-ear headphones of the same price range because this is a better everyday product that you'll get more value out of. Three, if you care deeply about noise cancellation and sound quality at the expense of everyday usage, as opposed to getting these, get the over-the-ear headphones. Four, if you're exploring other in-ear headphones, you got options like Sony WF-1000XM3, you got Bose Sound Sport Free, you got Samsung Galaxy Buds, you got Google Pixel Buds. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like they're all still chasing AirPods Pro in terms of design and getting all the details right. All right, having said that, I will give you a quick summary of what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the video. These are five arguments that I'm going to make as to why these AirPods Pro are worth the money. One, these can seriously compete against over-the-ear headphones for noise cancellation. Two, these got vent technology that makes it incomparable to other cheaper earphones. Three, Apple nails all these big things that we look for in earphones. Four, Apple nails all these small things we look for in earphones. And five, Apple's rolling out with uh, extra features for AirPods Pro coming out later this year. First, let's talk about noise cancellation. Noise cancellation is the first thing that I look for next to sound quality when I'm buying a pair of headphones. And I think the most of the money that I, sh that I spend on headphones should go towards noise cancellation. I think these reach 85 to 90% noise cancellation effectiveness as Bose QC35 over the ear headphones, the top notch noise cancellation headphones for everyday consumers out there. For those of you who do not own any of these, let me give you some examples of what effective noise cancellation sounds like at a cafe while running and at a quieter setting. So you're at a cafe, this is without any earphones. Now you're putting on Bose QC35s. Now you're putting on AirPods Pro. Now you're putting on some cheap $30 earphones that you bought off of Amazon. And this is while you're running without earphones. This is while you're running with AirPods Pro. This is while you're running with $30 Amazon headphones. This is at a relatively quieter setting with no earphones. This is with Bose QC35. This is with AirPods Pro. This is with $30 Amazon headphones. Now you heard some examples. The last test would have been for me to wear these on an airplane, which is kind of impossible to do during COVID, but I think I'm gonna go on a transplant run pretty soon here. So if you follow me on Instagram, MD Prospect, I will update you guys soon with that result. I've worn these Bose QC35 over the ear headphones almost every day and everywhere as a medical student. I used to wear these at a cafe and block out all the noise and completely focus on my studies. But I cannot wear these during summertime because it gets way too sweaty or during exercise. And these are big, so I can fold them up like this and carry around my backpack or put them around my neck, extend it fully, but they kind of squeeze down here and it's not comfortable. So as everyday headphones, these are not ideal. While AirPods Pro, you know, it's perfect for everyday usage. It achieves 85 to 90% of noise cancellation, in my opinion, compared to Bose QC35s. But I can wear these during summertime and I can wear these while exercising. So I'm willing to forego better noise cancellation and better sound quality to pick up one of these. 
And this is where I really don't understand the value proposition for regular AirPods. You know, if I'm going to spend over $200 on earphones with no noise cancellation, I'd rather spend that money on buying something with the noise cancellation like other competitors, like the ones that I previously mentioned, or just spend that extra $100 and get these AirPods Pro. You're spending that much money anyways. My second argument as to why these AirPods Pro are worth the money is because of its vent pressure technology. Now, these may seem like a trivial change, but this small change has made such a big difference in how I enjoy these AirPods Pro that I made into a whole new separate argument. The best way to describe this vent pressure technology for people who don't have AirPods Pro is by using fingers to block out your ears. Don't do it yet, let me explain first. Other in-ear headphones without this vent technology that claim to have noise cancellation will sound exactly like as if you put your fingers inside your ears. You can still hear your own breathing, you can still hear your own swallowing, you know, you feel plugged up, but AirPods Pro wouldn't do that. So try plugging your ears with your fingers And with AirPods Pro, if you plug them into your ears, it will initially feel like you're plugging up your ears with your fingers, and then it makes this sound, and it completely changes the environment. The pressure between your ears and the outside kind of equalizes, and you hear your breathing less, you hear your swallowing less, and you don't feel plugged up, which is like, just completely amazing. All right, number three, Apple nails all the big things that we look for in a pair of headphones with AirPods Pro. So these are things like sound quality, comfort, ease of use, design, portability. In terms of sound quality, AirPods Pro apparently have this thing called adaptive EQ, which is supposed to modify sound based on the shape of your ear to give you the best experience. You know, it, it has good sound quality, but I would say the bass is still lacking. I would say it's probably reaching 70% of what Bose QC35 offers. In terms of comfort, these initially hurt when I bought them for about a week. Like, they just outside my ear would hurt, and I was thinking, you know what, I might return them because, you know, they're not supposed to hurt. But I think it just takes time for your ears to adjust. Now I can wear them for hours on end, and I, I still feel com completely comfortable. And these do not fall out. So I did a little test outside. I tried my absolute best to get these AirPods out of my ears. I couldn't do them. I also ran with these all the time and they never fell out of my ears. In terms of ease of use, the connection to your phone is incredibly fast. This is what bothered me the most with cheaper earphones that are bought on Amazon. And sometimes it wouldn't connect. Sometimes it would take too long to connect. I would have to open up the settings, go to Bluetooth, you know, press connect to connect it. Whereas these, as soon as you put them in your ears, boom, it's connected. I would say the battery is the biggest downside for AirPods Pro. Let me give you an example. So if I listen to these for two hours fully charged, and let's say I have 50% battery left, and if I just left them on the table like this without put, putting them in a charging case, and go you know, do my own thing for two hours and come back, these would have nearly 0% left. These don't shut off unless you put them in the charging case. So there have been, you know, I've owned them for about a month. There have been four to five times in that span of, span of a month where I picked them up and realized, oh no, I have to charge these before listening. AirPods Pro are IPX4 water resistant. They're advertised as being water and sweat proof. I put out a chart here of what that means. IPX4 is supposed to mean it is resistant to water splashes from any direction. Let's talk about the design. I think these look the best compared to other earphones of the same price range, like the Galaxy Buds or the Pixel Buds that look more round and bulky. People complain a lot that these don't have volume buttons on them, but I personally didn't have any problems with it because I would just adjust the volumes on my phone and I can, without taking these phone out, I can just keep it in my pocket and find the volume buttons and then adjust the volume from there. Portability wise, AirPods Pro are the best in the market right now. I have yet to come across a pair of headphones with this charging case that's smaller than these. In terms of sizing, these fit into those small pockets within your pocket and your jeans and these fit into small Lululemon shorts pockets. All right, now let's talk about the small little details Apple gets right with AirPods Pro. Now, Apple added this transparency mode where you can keep these on and still talk to other people. Now, right now I'm on transparency mode. I can still hear myself clearly. If the other people were sitting in front of me, I, I would hear them clearly. But I just find it so rude to keep them on while talking to other people. And it's so much faster to just take it off and talk to people as opposed to switching back and forth. So for example, if I'm on a noise canceling mode listening to music, and I'm supposed to talk to that person, what I would have to do is I would first have to pause the music 
and I would have to put them into transparency mode before talking to them. And that would take over two seconds. So I don't use this transparency mode often. Tasha gets incredibly mad if I have these on while talking to her. Um, the only time I use is when I'm walking outside or running outside and I need to pay attention to what's going on around me so that I'm safe. That's when I turn it on while listening to music or listening to audiobooks. Another small thing that Apple did really well is auto play and auto stop. So as soon as I put them on, the audiobook starts playing. As soon as I take it off, the audiobook stops playing and there's almost no latency and that is awesome. The last small thing that Apple did really well is Siri integration to these AirPods Pro. I don't really use Siri because they're slow and they don't answer me correctly at times and they don't allow me to use Spotify or Google Maps. But when I'm running with these AirPods Pro, that's when the Siri integration really shines. So I'm running like this, uh, listening to an audiobook, and I get a text message. It, Siri automatically stops the audiobook and then reads the text message out loud to me. And then I say my response back. And after my confirmation, it sends it to that person. And then automatically it starts replaying the audiobook. And I can do all of this without touching my phone, without you know touching my AirPods. You know I have my hands free and I'm continuously running. And that's amazing. Now my last argument for AirPods Pro is that there are extra features that are coming out to AirPods Pro that were just announced at WWDC for iOS 14. So the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is automatic switching between Apple devices. So right now I have to you know, connect my Bluetooth on my laptop and my phone, you know, juggle it back and forth every time I use different devices. But with automatic switching, if I'm looking at my phone, it's connected to the laptop. And as soon as I switch to my phone, it connects directly to my phone so that I don't have to mess with Bluetooth. Second thing is spatial audio. Um, it's supposed to give you like a surround sound. Um, so I put an animation here. Now this is supposed to give you a surround sound if you're watching Netflix on your iPad or, or on your phone. Even if you move your head around, the sound should come from where it's supposed to come. All right, that's the end of the video. Hopefully this is the last video you watch before buying on AirPods Pro. Uh, my next video will feature a MacBook Pro 2020 13 inch model update after 100 days of usage. And then the videos after that will be MacBook Air student focused review and iPads Pro student focused review. I hope you guys have a good day and see you guys soon. Oh, 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 oh,